Earth was graced with a massive G5 solar storm the weekend of May 10th, 2024. This is on our way to solar maximum. You can get details for upcoming solar storms and aurora events at spaceweather.gov, where you can get predictions as well as look at an aurora dashboard to see if any aurora will be at a location near you. I was lucky enough to be able to see it from my backyard, and I live in a Bortle 8 location just outside of Boston, so I was really surprised that I was able to see not only with my camera, but with my eyes as well. And today I'm going to go over the camera settings and the hardware that I used in order to capture the time lapse that you saw as well as the individual images that made up that time lapse. This was my first opportunity to photograph the Northern Lights, so I am far from an expert. But I found these settings that work for me and maybe they'll work for you too, especially if you live in light polluted areas like me. For a camera, I'm using my Canon T5i. You can use any camera that lets you control the exposure time, such as a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, or even a cell phone. And for my lens, I use this Samyang 14 millimeter wide angle lens that I normally use for meteor showers and the Milky Way galaxy. And it was perfect for the Aurora as well. So you do want to use the lens that gives you the widest field of view because that allows you to capture more of the sky. Auroras typically take up a big portion of the sky, especially if it's directly over you. I wish I had an even bigger field of view, maybe an all sky camera that captured all of it around me, but alas, I only had this. Along with the wide field of view, what helps is if you can open up your aperture as wide as possible. This goes up to f2.8, which is pretty wide, but not the widest. This is a manual lens, which means that I need to set the aperture and focus manually. And for astrophotography and for taking nighttime landscape images, this is perfect. So I just take my dial and I turn it all the way to 2.8. I also need to focus manually and I have a marker for focusing to infinity. I normally have to go a tiny bit past infinity and then my images look perfect. If you have autofocus on your lens, I recommend turning it off, turning on manual focus, focusing on something really far away such as a star, make sure it's pinpoint and keeping autofocus off. Of course, for stability, put your camera on a tripod. And if you're taking single images, use the built-in timer or an intervalometer. You can use one that's built into your camera if it has one, or you can use an external intervalometer like this one that I've been using for over a decade now. As for capture settings, I use two second exposures at ISO 1600 and of course f2.8. If I were to do it again, I probably would use ISO 3200. Of course, that introduces more noise, but we can fix that in post-processing. And at the height of the Aurora, it was extremely bright. So two seconds was more than enough to capture the colors and the shape of the Aurora. If the Aurora around you is dimmer, then a longer exposure and or higher ISO will help. But again, you'll have to make sure that you're aware of any increased noise that a higher ISO would introduce to your images. And of course, take sky glow and other light pollution into account because if that light goes into your field of view as well, those will also get amplified based on the ISO and your exposure settings. So do some tests and see what works for you. And hopefully we'll have plenty of opportunities over the next year during solar maximum to image more Northern lights. All right, so I have this one image picked out and this is what it looks like. I think this is probably my best one from all of my images. And we're going to edit this and make it look a little bit nicer. So I have Photoshop open and I'm just going to click and drag and open it here. If you're opening a raw file like CR2 or CR3, it should open up camera raw filter automatically. Open up in my other screen, there we go. Um, and if it doesn't, all you need to do is after you open it, go to filter and then click on camera raw uh, and you should get a window like this. First, I'm gonna hide this bar here because I don't need it. And before we make any changes to the sliders here, I'm gonna go down all the way here where we have optics and up here, we're gonna check on use profile corrections. And what I'll do is I'll select my lens here so that it actually uh, makes the image look more natural. So I'll do make, yeah, I have a Samyang 14 millimeter. So it auto detects the rest of it. So you can see that it it uh, like flattened out a little bit. So if I you know hide it, you can see that it looks a little bit brighter, it looks a little bit better. The shadows here look a little bit better already. So I do this first because Otherwise, I find that if I do this later, I have to readjust some of my settings to make it look like I want. So I'll collapse that. I don't need it anymore. So my exposures, I'm going to increase it just a little bit, 0.05, which is about 5%. Contrast, I'll do quite a lot. So I'll do like 50. Highlights, I'll leave alone. Shadows, I'll do just a little bit just to make the shadows here pop a little bit more for a little bit more dynamic range. Whites, I will do like also like 10, 12%. 
and blacks I will do just a tiny bit so like let's say 7% so if we look back and forth you can see that it pops a little more this looks a little bit dull but you know if we if I let go we have the edits it looks much more colorful just by messing with the exposure contrast and highlights here if you want to do some more color adjustments like with vibrance and saturation you can do it I, I think I'll just leave everything blank or at zero I don't really need it I like the colors that I have already so I'll leave that alone under effects uh, we have dehaze clarity and texture that i'll do a little bit so dehaze i'll probably take it out to like let's say like 25 and let's see and what that does is it makes the haze go away a little bit and we get to see some more of the structure of the aurora you can see the structure of the clouds as well so we'll increase the clarity as well a little bit it does introduce a little bit more noise but we can fix that soon and increase the texture a little bit so if we un hide and then show it again we can see the difference here it looks looks nice i think i'll go down on the texture and the clarity don't need that much yeah just trying to make it uh look nice without overcooking it okay so that's good uh color mixture i'm not going to do anything here the color mixer uh but like you can affect individual colors like red but you can see that it's pretty easy to overcook so i'm just going to leave that blank as well now this part here is the noise reduction so adobe came out with their own ai denoise it doesn't i don't think it exists for every version yet at least the time i'm using it i have it here if you open this file through uh, camera raw using the filter uh, option here i find that sometimes it doesn't work i'm not I haven't looked into why but if i open you know click and drag and open the cr2 file then it opens here so if you don't have it, it's okay. You can do manual noise reduction. This is the default. This is what we're used to anyway. And you can get the exact same results without using the AI. But I will do the AI just to show you what it looks like. And so we click on denoise and we'll get a, another pop-up where we can adjust some of our denoise settings. Here we go. So you can see that this is the enhanced view. And if we click on it, we can see without the enhance. And it defaults to 50% or 50. Um, we can increase it more to like 100 and it becomes really smooth. If you click on this uh, minus magnifying glass here, you zoom out all the way and it looks fine. It's, it's a little bit hard to tell, right? If you, you click on it, you get you zoom in, but I think 100 is too much. So I think 50 is the default and I think 50 is good enough where we have some of the uh, some of the noise but it looks really good so like zoomed out you can see that it looks actually really nice and it says estimated time six seconds click enhance and we'll give it a second or six seconds and there we go so it denoised if we zoom in we can see it looks a lot smoother there is still some graininess but it's fine it looks looks pretty natural the clouds look okay and I am happy with it and if you don't have this again again you can do manual noise reduction you can do this on top of the D AI denoise as well. I'm just not going to, I'm just gonna leave it alone. So like if we do a little quick test, yeah, you can see that the, the graininess changes a little bit. Alrighty, so I think these are all the changes I'm going to do and I'm just gonna click on open and here we have it. And you can click on file and export. Um, I recommend exporting as a PNG or export as a PNG and you'll get something that looks really nice. You can make simpler changes to your data in mass in Lightroom, export them as JPEGs, and then turn them into an Aurora time lapse like you saw at the beginning of this video. If there's any interest in creating a tutorial on how to do this, and Aurora specific time lapse, let me know in the comments below. If you saved your eclipse glasses, I would encourage you to use those to look at the sun because the sunspot named AR3664 that was responsible for the coronal mass ejection that caused this massive G5 solar storm resulting in these amazing northern lights was visible to the eye with just the solar eclipse glasses. That means you didn't need to do any kind of magnification and that kind of blew my mind. And with solar maximum on its way, I'm hoping that we see more sunspots and maybe some more CMEs to get some more northern lights. Minus any Carrington events that could send us back into the 19th century. If you took images of the Aurora, consider joining our Discord server and sharing it with the community. Clear skies.